Alexa, stop. Mm, well, good, I'm sorry. <laughs> good evening, good evening, good evening. Welcome one, welcome all to I Am My Sister's Keeper. I am your host, Miss Terry Penny. How are you guys doing today? I am doing, I am wonderful. Let's say that. I am wonderful. It is good. To be home, y'all, it was a good weekend. We're not going to do much talking because we're going to get right in it. I forgot to upload the video from uh, Wednesday. And that's why I am late because I had to have room to make for this video. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go before the father and ask him and his son to come on down and join us. And we're going to get started on our lesson. We're only going to do it for an hour. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you. Excuse me. We come to you to say thank you. Thank you, Father, for watching over us. For waking us up to see this beautiful day. Thank you for the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for all that you have done for our families. Our brothers and sisters all around the world, even close to home. Father, we ask that you come and sit with us as we go in and study your words. That you open our minds, hearts and souls and, and give us clarity on what we're reading. Jesus, we ask that you come down and teach this class and hide me behind the cross. Jesus, we just want to say 
thank you for being who you are, for loving us the way you do, for walking with us and talking with us and just showing us the way. Father, I ask that you bless with each and every one of us with our daily needs. Show us the path that you have us have for us. Thank you. I pray that this be pleasing and acceptable to you. In your son Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen and amen. And I plead the blood of Jesus over this prayer. That no weapon may form against it or its people. Thank you. Okay. So, as y'all know, over the weekend, I went to the camp to put up new beds and stuff. If y'all know any children that are interested in camp, even the adults that are interested in camp, go to the Army Lake Camp website, East Troy, Mich mm, I was finna say Michigan, East Troy, Wisconsin. And sign your kids up for summer camp. The devotional the devotional for the day is when the lights went out. It says, even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. First Corinthians 12, 14. Scripture for the day, first Corinthians 12. 12 through 18. It says, Ted Higgins was a retired electrician with a secret. A widower for the last 10 years, he continued to faithfully attend his beloved church alone. To skip a service was unthinkable to Ted, and he always arrived early, usually before everyone else. Before greeting a few other early birds, Ted would dash down a side stairway into the basement and open the door to a small, dusty closet. With a little flashlight he always carried, Ted would open up the electrical fuse box mounted on the wall inspecting it quickly to make sure no fuses had blown since the last church service. If one had, he will replace it with an extra fuse he kept in his pocket over the years. That's dedication. Ted had replaced several fuses and managed to avert any many electrical blackouts. Then it happened. During a special evening service, the lights went dark and the sound system died. 
and the air conditioner slowly whined to a stop before anyone else could respond. Ted bolted downstairs and had <laughs> everything up and running in less than a minute. Ted had a talent, a gift that he used in service to his fellow believers quietly behind the scene. Every Christian also has a spiritual gift to offer. The question is, are you using yours? That is the question of the day. Are you using your spiritual gift that God gave you? To help others. I'm going to put that in the comment box. Right quick. The question of the day. Are you using your spiritual gift Now, we left off at verse 5. So, I'm going to read it from the Bible. And then I'm going to go to the study guide. Now, 5 through 8 is talking about the judgment of Babylon. The judgment of Babylon. Now, I would do a summary of one through four, but excuse me, of one through four, but I want to go ahead and get into today's lesson. Tomorrow, I will go in, since I finished uploading everything, I'll go into the summary of book one through eight. It says, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and, the, and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and laminate for her and lament. When they shall see the smoke of her burning. Oh, I'm sorry. That's... I'm on... <laughs> Verse 5, I'm sorry. Verse 5 says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. The breakdown of verse 5. For her sins have reached unto the heavens, carries the ideal of rebellion against God, which is the ruin of mankind. It says, again, carries the ideal 
of rebelling against God. Didn't want to partake in the gospel. Did not want to hear the teachings of the gospel. Didn't want to hear anything that concerns God the Father and God the Son. The second part of that verse, and God has Remember her iniquities. The only way God will forget sin and iniquities is by man's placing his faith and trust in Christ and what Christ has done for us at the cross. Hebrews 8, 6, and 12. Verse 6 says, Reward her even as she rewards you. And double up your double up her double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, fill to her double. <laughs> Listen to six again. Reward her even as she rewards you and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she has filled, filled to her double. The breakdown of six, reward her even as she rewards you. Saints are not called to render vengeance, but rather the statement is made that God will do such. The idea is that every act of hurt by the world or the apostate church against God's people will be answered in kind. But in the in this case, it pertains It okay, it pertains so to the Jews than anything else. Genesis 12, 31. The second part of that verse, and double unto her double according to her works. In a sense, pertains to the fact that the future rebuilt city of Babylon will suffer the judgment of God of the ages. The efforts by President by President Bush to change the government in Iraq, which in fact was the right thing to do, is a part of the process which will enable Babylon to be rebuilt. In the cup which she has filled to her brim. God's answer to man's rebellion will be to demonstrate the destruction of Babylon. The end almost, I'm sorry. God's answer to man's rebellion will be the destruction of Babylon and in a cataclysmic way. Verse 7, how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and row, I mean, and sorrow gives her. For she said in her heart, I sit, I sit a queen, and I am no widow. And shall see no sorrow. Hmm. Uh. 
the breakdown of verse 7. How much she has glorified herself pertains to the characteristics of religion. To glorify oneself is to put yourself above everything else. When the false religion, how people thinking and, and going against God, that's when you just... You have to ask yourself. Which one is the appraising? Which God are they praising? Worship. It says, and live dis deliciously refers to the earthly rewards of religion and its base. One will always find money. So much torment and sorrow gives her refers to the fact that judgment has made has been laid up for this city of Babylon, symbolic of man's system, which is a system without God. We reap what we are sown. She said in her heart, I sit a queen and am now widow and shall see no sorrow. Shall she? She's the breakdown. This is the breakdown. She calls herself a queen while the Lord refers to her as the great whore, which pronounced her doom. Therefore, verse 8, shall her play come in on, come in one day, death and mourning and famine points to the great earthquake of Revelation 16, 16. And she, no, and she shall be utterly burned with the fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. I'm going to read eight again. Therefore shall her plague come in one day, death and mourning and famine. And she said, by utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord who judge her. The breakdown of this verse, the first point, points to the great earthquake Revelation 16, 18. The second part of that verse, the ideal is that Satan through the Antichrist will boast of his great strength so that the Lord will in effect show the Antichrist and the world, what strength really is. That is verses 5 through 8. Okay, where's my marker so I can... And this section had 
four, reference prices. Now, to our study guide. It says, Babylon's judgment. It says, for her sins have reached unto heaven. This commercial metropolis, metropolis of the world will be destroyed shortly preceding our Lord's second coming. God will judge this and that. God will judge this false system that has proudly and arrogantly taught taught it was a uh mm, hold on the false system that has proudly and arrogantly taught it was too strong great and powerful to be brought down So the false system, where the Antichrist thought that he was too strong and too great and too powerful to be brought down, that his church was the same way. It says, yet it will be destroyed in one hour swiftly and brought to naught. One hour. His city that has become and then it says this city that has become the center of the world's riches and the center of the world's commerce in one day is destroyed by God. Again, this may be rebuilt Babylon, modern day Iraq. An existing city or a city that is built by the Antichrist, whatever the case, it will be an economic kingdom and center for world commerce. This is very similar to the prophecy against ancient Babylon. Mm. It's I see I'm I don't want to use my words. Um Because there's a Babylon is kind of like the city of Tyree. Because the city of Tyree, you could do your, you could find anything there. There were stones, grains, uh, silk. 
uh, there were animals. There, there was slavery in Tyree. Chariots, horses, weapons, anything you needed, you could find in Tyree. And Tyree, and it, the it was a city by the sea. They had a port where ships would come back and forth. And that city was built up by Satan. This Babylon, this rebuilt Babylon, was powerful it was great and it was strong which means its military force was strong it was powerful in the government it was rich it was the center And this city was built by the son of Satan. When you compare the two cities together, and by the way, um, there is water next to Iran. In fact, if we look at our map, and we look for Babylon, That's the Romans, Palestine, Jerusalem. We're looking for Babylon. Okay, so Babylon was right next to this is Lydia. Okay, so Tyree was next to the Western Sea. Which put. Babylon was next to. Or they would put a smile where you can't read it. But Babylon is next to a body of water. Which I cannot see it to pronounce it because it is very small. And if I show it to y'all, y'all wouldn't be able to see it either. But it is next to a body of water. So, two great cities, both by water. So that means both had ports. 
Both were powerful. Both had... Both was powerful in the government. Both of them were trade... Trade ready. Both of them had... I lost my page. Both of them had were strong and military wise. It said one was built by Satan and one was built by the Antichrist. Both of them was used for economic. It's right there. This is where the money was made. This is where their command center was when it comes to armies and, 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 and making war plans. The only thing of is that Tyree wasn't destroyed in an hour. Babylon, the new Babylon or the rebuilt Babylon is going to be destroyed in one hour. Tyree was destroyed over time. It says, and Babylon, the glory of kingdom, the splendor, and the pride of the Chaldeans will be like Sodom and Gomorrah. When God overthrow them, it will never be inhabited or dwelt in for all generations. No Arabs will pitch their tents. No shepherds will make their flocks lie down there, but wild beasts will lie down and its house will be full of howling creatures. The ostrich will dwell there, strays will dance, hyenas will cry in the towers and jackals in their in the pleasant, pla pleasant palace. Its time is close at hand and its days will not be prolonged. Right now, Tyree, if you go and visit, it's just a big rock where the fishermen go and hang their nets. There, there's no inhabitant. So it's, it's everything is similar. It says, and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously, luxuriously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning stand afar off for the fear of her torment. Saying, alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. All the people who either lived there, who traded there, who sold there, who did business there. They're going to suffer. They're going to, because their livelihood has just been taken from them. Their money-making place has just been taken from them. They have lost everything because it's just like Wall Street crashing. And all those people who had their money there, they lost everything. 
That's how these people are going to be when the new Babylon is falling. They're going to lose everything they had because instead of putting their investment in Christ and his gospel, they put their investment in man. They put their trust funds and their livelihood in the hands of sinners, false prophets and teachers and preachers, dishonest governments. They didn't want to hear what thus says the Bible. They didn't want to hear the word of God. It says, it sounds like its destruction could very well be a nuclear blast of some kind and there is a heavy radiation which causes them to fear to approach the city. In each case, they are standing far off and they are afraid. To approach it, which does sound like a lot of radioactive around the destruction of this city. The fact that it is destroyed is just a moment's time. It sounds like a detonation of a nuclear device with heavy radiation following it. Either that or God simply rains down fire and brimstones on it as he did Sodom and Gomorrah. What causes the destruction of the new Babylon? Who knows what God's intention is? Too many countries today have nuclear weapons that can be fired at any time. If we if we don't start putting our trust in Christ if we don't start believing in his son and the cross. We're not going to make it. If we don't start. Holding ourselves. Accountable. For the things we do and say. We will never see the glory of God. We will never get to step foot in heaven. We will never I I I 
I want to be with my father. I will I, I He burned down Sodom and Sodom and Gomorrah because of the filth and the abomination that was going on in that Sin is not a laughing matter. But when you have people who know they're doing wrong and don't care, This Babylon is located in Iraq, modern day Iraq. The new Babylon is going to be in the same place, in Iraq. The people that's going to come against God's children in the battle of Armageddon is coming out of Iraq. The ones that are going to give their authority It started with Babylon and it's going to end with Babylon. And everyone that is associated with Babylon and the Antichrist will perish. Okay, I'm going back to the King James Bible. Verse 9. This is talking about the fall of Babylon. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and laminate for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Now I read that from the study guide. 
This is the breakdown in the Bible. This is what it said. It speaks of spiritual adultery, the worship of another of anything other than God and trust placed in anything except Christ and him crucified is spiritual adultery. Remember, in, in Nimrod time, they had idols that they worshipped. The Egyptians had idols that they worshipped. The Syrians, Assyrians had idols, idols that they worshipped. All those people that surrounded the Israelite people worshipped idols. They were paganist. The Romans are paganist. The Muslims are paganist. Some Koreans, some Japanese, some, they're paganist. Anything other than God and trust placed in anything except Christ and him crucified is spiritual adultery. The second part says, and live deliciously with her, shall be well her and lament for her. Babylon and we speak of the system is their God. So they lament for their God. When they shall see the smoke of her burning, Signals for more than the destruction of one city. It is the end of a system, a way, a false way, a terrible way, and will be carried out the very conclusion of the great tribulation, which will usher in the second coming. It's a terrible way, a false way, an end way. It says... When they shall see the smoke of her burning, signals far more than the destruction of one city. It is the end of a system, a way. I'm sorry, I just read that. Let me mark this. Okay, verse 10. Standing far off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is your judgment come. The breakdown of 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment. The destruction of this city will... No doubt be televised all over the world as well. Much of the world will fear the same judgment is coming upon them, knowing that God has done this. This you will see 
all over the television. We will get to see the new Babylon be destroyed. Wow. You're going to see when Jesus ascend the heavens to call his people. You're going to see when Jesus ascend the heavens for the battle of Armageddon. You're going to see when the Antichrist come onto the scene and sign the seven year peace treaty. Then you're going to see him again when he breaks the peace treaty. You're going to see when the, the statue is put in the temple. You're going to see when the statue is speaking. You're going to see about the, the uh, chip in the, well, the mark of the beast in the hand and in the forehead being televised. You're going to see. Are you guys ready to handle all of this that we are about to see? It says, Saying, Alas, alas, the great city of Babylon, that mighty city, proclaims the lament, knowing that her destruction signals the end of Satan's rule. The end of Satan's rule. For in one hour, is your judgment come. Ancient Babylon gradually decay, but this Babylon will be totally destroyed in one hour. Remember I said it, Babylon, it went up decades before it was destroyed. This Babylon ain't gonna even have time to grow. Verse 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise anymore. Okay, so we got through 8 through 11. Excuse me. So we talked about the judgment of Babylon, which is going to happen into one hour and where her people is going to wail or cry or be stunned or outdone or outdid because of the simple fact that their livelihood, their place of business, the place where they sell, buy, and trade has been destroyed. We also learned that
it could be destroyed through Nick um Nicholas <laughs> through Nick nuclear weapons or but don't nobody know for sure how this was going to happen. God could also do it the way he did Sodom and Gomorrah by raining hell's fire fire brick I mean, I'm sorry. I can't even say it right. I'm saying too many things. Fire and brimstone from the heavens. So if We see it on television. Where Iraq is being attacked. We're going to start tomorrow with 12 through 19. And that will be the end. And then we will start the second printout sheet of 18. So tomorrow is 12 through 24. Then the second printout, and then we'll be done with chapter 18. See something. So let us pray. How you doing, Mr. Epps? So tomorrow, we will, again, we will start with verse 12 and go through 24, finish up the study guide. Then we'll start the next printout and finish up chapter 18. And then we'll move on to chapter 19. And then we have two more chapters in Revelations. And then I think what I'm going to do is when we finish chapter 22, um, I'm going to sit down after we finish 22 and I'm going to go through chap from chapter, tw chapter 1 through chapter 22 and do a brief summary of all 22 chapters. And then, cause it's it's base it's, it's real simple, but I'm just not gonna tell you right now. So let us pray. I'm gonna let you guys go on and enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, and I I I will see y'all tomorrow. Um, announcements. I'm telling y'all now ahead of time so y'all will know this. On April the 22nd, April 22nd, I will be leaving to go to camp. That's when it starts for me. I will not be back home until November 
the first. April 22nd, 2024, I will be leaving for camp. I will not be back home until November the 1st of 2024. That don't mean for y'all to stop studying. Even though we'll be finished with Revelations, that don't mean y'all stop reading and study your Bibles. You can go back and watch the videos from the past and watch them all the way up until the present. But don't stop studying. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Even though it was only an hour Bible study, we thank you for the information that we received. And that is all the false religion system, the false um, economic system that was set up by the Antichrist, who was given the power by Satan himself to set up these systems here on this earth, will be destroyed. And that the people that invested in these systems, the people that lived by these systems, are going to suffer right along with it. Father, we understand the concept now because we get it. If you believe in man and man's word and man's system and man's doctrine, then you will fail with man. But if you trust, in Jesus Christ, in everything that he has done, then you will never fail. Thank you. Thank you. Father, I pray to you, thanking you for your presence being here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Father, be with my brothers and sisters as they sleep. Give them traveling grace and mercy. I ask that you watch over my brothers and sisters and family. Love on them. Keep the, the peace between them. Lord, give me strength, give me courage, give me wisdom and knowledge. In your Holy Son, Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Thank you. In your holy name I pray. Amen. When Jesus 
I pray that you watch over each and every one. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over this prayer. Good night. Thank you for hearing my prayers. Thank you for answering them. Amen. And amen. Okay, know that God loves you and he always has and he always will. Know no matter what you come against, no matter what the world throws at you, no matter what your family say about you, no matter how far down in the pit that you done dug yourself into, all you got to do is call on the name of Jesus and he will come and pull you out of it. No questions asked. No mystery loves each and every one of you guys to the moon and back. And again, I apologize for today. I had to upload the last one. It won't happen again. You guys have a blessed and wonderful evening. <laughs> I don't know why I want this afternoon. But y'all have a blessed and wonderful evening. Y'all stay safe. Y'all be good. And I will see you guys tomorrow.